Hi everybody, this is Apostle Misha Softier, just welcoming you to our Sunday night edition of Study in the Word. And I'm sorry, I was supposed to start at 8 p.m. It's now about 9.15 and I just realized I missed my 8 p.m. start. And the reason was because in the past we've been doing it on Wednesday nights at 8 and I changed it to Thursday nights at 8. So I still have to adjust to it. So it, we're doing our study Thursdays at 8 p.m. and Sundays, uh, Sunday nights at 8 p.m. And um, so that's pretty much where we're at right now. So again, I apologize. Um, <clears throat> I, I put in my Facebook page that we would start tonight at 9.30, and I'm already on here at 9.15, but I just wanted to start with a little bit of prayer and um, just maybe some worship and a few announcements. Uh, so let me begin with the announcements first of all and kind of let you know what's going on with uh, Misha Softier Ministries. Uh, I've just at about four, got another 40 pages left to edit my second book um, that will be uh, out for publication. Uh, and that one is called Escape from Your Past. It will be about 400 pages long. Uh, it uh, My first book was uh, Escape from Apostasy, which I wrote in, in September of 2015. At least that was when it was published. Uh, my second book will be out. Uh, I'm hopeful that it will be published by the end of this month. Uh, the only delay could possibly be <clears throat> if I decide to make a sudden change in who publishes the book. Uh, it's um, something that I'm praying about right now. Okay, and that could delay it, but maybe a month or so, but I don't think it will. And uh, so that's uh, the information as far as my book is concerned. Um, all of my study in the Word uh, messages are, uh, I try to transfer them to YouTube. So you can, uh, if you don't watch them here on Facebook Live, and if you notice, you can go back. I think on Facebook Live, as long as I've been doing them, and they should be still there. But if they're not there, and the messages somehow end up being deleted, and we never know what social media is going to do. Uh, I've also transferred um, most of those messages, at least the last, probably the last 20 of them, uh, to YouTube. And they can be found under Misha uh, Softie, S-A-F-D-I-E, Misha is M-I-S-C-H-A, on YouTube under Study in the Word, okay, and you can look at them there, and also I try and transfer the messages that I think will be, uh, most productive, uh, to, uh, my ministry website, which is MishaSoftieAMinistries.com, and if you go to the media section there, you can listen not only can you watch our video broadcasts, but um, you can also listen to uh, men, uh, messages I've brought at different churches for many years uh, up to now. Okay, and I've got many, many more that I've not posted on there yet that I'm going to get around to doing soon. But they're in the media section of our ministry website. Okay, so I just want to encourage you to go there and to... Enjoy the Word of God. One of the things that we've done at Misha Saptier Ministries is never compromise God's Word, but just speak the gospel in complete truth. Uh, and uh, that's that's the, really the desire of my heart and our goal. Uh, another announcement uh, regarding this is that my uh, wife will be uh, speaking probably on the first Thursday of every month on our study in the Word. So. If you like listening to her, she's a great speaker and always brings an excellent word. Uh, my wife, lovely Softier, uh, will be ministering, studying the word on the first uh, uh, Thursday night of every month. Okay, so that'll be upcoming soon. So I encourage you to come on. Okay, so um, it's getting not it's it's not nine thirty yet. I guess we're just gonna start a little bit early, and whoever wants to sign on can catch on and maybe. Uh, watch from that point or uh, the messages will be available here anyway after I'm done uh, for everyone to listen to. So I'm just going to get moving with this, I think. But I do want to open up with a, a moment of prayer and uh, 
I had my announcements for our, our ministry, and before I pray, I also want to say something regarding the coming elections. I've tried not to get get political and try to keep my politics and keep politics out of uh, uh, our ministry because when Jesus Christ walked the earth, uh, he lived under Roman occupation of Israel, and you didn't see him speak out much against the social injustices and the uh, political corruption and racial injustices that occurred during that time. He basically said to render to Caesar what is uh, belongs to Caesar and to render to God what belongs to God and to love your neighbor as yourself. He never really went any further than that. But I do believe in the times that we're living in right now because our country is changing, that Christians need to wake up, be alert, and we need to pray. And really the church needs to give voice and not as a as a political force per se but as a moral force okay because we what we see is marxism and socialism a minority by the way of marxists and socialists on the far left trying to basically uh overthrow our country and one of the mandates for marxism and socialism is to do away with uh, christianity and the christian church so the church is under attack right now. Um, if you look at my last post, you'll see a number of people arrested for singing in an outside service in, I, in the state of, I think it was Idaho, or Iowa, but I believe it was Idaho. Uh, and you can watch that uh, afterwards. But I think that all of us as Christians need to begin to speak. And the best way to do it is, um, I, I'm, I'm not going to say that we need to yell and speak out in... Um, protest unless we protest our right to worship and freedom of speech. But I think one of the most effective ways that we can let our voice be known right now is for everybody to register to vote and let it be known at the polls that you do not support unbiblical uh, candidates. Okay, we we need to protect our faith and uh, you know abortion on demand, uh, the killing of babies that never had an opportunity to speak for themselves never had a chance to go before a judge or a jury, you know, or being slaughtered in this country and have been for, for a long time. Um, open uh, gay lifestyles and gay marriage uh, are an abomination to God when the Bible says that marriage should be between a man and between a woman. So I, I need not say more. Uh, I'm not going to tell you who to vote for. I'm not going to push a candidate or anything. I think common sense will tell you that you can't align yourself with a, with candidates that don't support biblical teaching. Okay, you, if we, we're going to choose, we need to choose on the side of, of those that support what our Bi <coughs> what the Bible and what the Word of God teaches and, and, and teaches us. And um, when there are platforms, be it whether be it Republican or Democrat uh, or or independent, when there are platforms running and they're running against uh, biblical principles, and they're enemies of, the, of Israel, I think we need to take a hard look at uh, who we vote for, and that some of us may have to vote different than our parties. I mean, um, <clears throat> you know, there are some Democrats that may have to vote Republican, and, or vice versa, or however you, you choose to vote, but um, you're going to have to make some choices, and I think uh, at this particular time when... I, I, in my mind, I see the elections being, um, uh, let me just say, tampered with, okay, or there's a, a, a move that's going on to try to overthrow the election before it's even begun, because those on the other side or on the losing side know that they're not able to win under normal circumstances, so they're going to do what they can to try to steal the election, so it's all the more important for those of us that are Christians and evangelicals, uh, evan to you know, to get out and to to let our our voice be made known. Okay, so that's all I'm going to say <clears throat> about that particular subject. Um, I'm trying to see if there was anything else I, I needed to make in my announcements. Um, yeah, the other thing was just uh, be in prayer, folks. Those of us that are Christians, we need to pray for our country. Um, we need to pray for our leaders, all of them. Okay, because we can pray for God to change the hearts of, of, of wicked men and uh, to strengthen the hearts of good men 
and we can uh, believe for God to change uh, the leadership if it's not willing to repent and do the right thing. And so there's a lot of power in prayer. We just need to use it. Okay, so uh, having said that, I just want to open up with prayer. And tonight I'm going to talk about the, the subject of contentment, about learning and understanding contentment, you know, in, in the Lord. And so, Father, I pray right now that you anoint me to just as we go through this uh, relatively short study or short passage, uh, that you um, anoint me to speak your words, that the words not come from myself, but that they become uh, words that are spirit-driven uh, by your Holy Spirit. You said, Lord, that your words are spirit and life. We know they're creative. And so, Father, I pray they don't go in one ear and out the other, but they uh, bear uh, fruit within our hearts and expand, Lord, so that we're able to <clears throat> walk with you effectively. In Jesus' name we pray, and I thank you for it. Amen, amen. Well, contentment and in, in, in understanding that God provides in the time that we're living in is really important. And I, I don't think that anybody uh, said it any better than the Apostle Paul. So I want to just go, uh, if you have your Bibles, to Philippians chapter 4. And uh, re begin reading from verse 10. And I'm only going to read um, probably uh, 10, I think probably just 10 through 12. No, no, 10 through um, ten through 13. So we're only going to read three verses, but um, they say a lot. And uh, so if you see me picking at my nose, it's not that. It's my mustache is <laughs> tickling my nose when I talk. And it's so thick, I may have to trim it back a little bit. Okay, so sorry about that. All right, verse 10, all right. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly. Okay, this is the Apostle Paul. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at least, or, or at last, you have, received your, uh, you have received your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned before, but you lacked opportunity. Verse 11, not that I speak from want. Here we go, and this is where it's important. For, and you may want to underline this too, okay? For I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances I am. In other, in other words, he's learned to be content in whatever circumstances he's in, okay? Verse 12, I know how to get along with humble means, <clears throat> and I also know how to live in prosperity. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of being filled and going hungry, both of having abundance and suffering need. I can do all things to him who strengthens me. Okay, I want to read um, verse 12 again. I know how to get along with humble means, and I also know how to live in prosperity. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of being filled and going hungry, both of having abundance and suffering need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. And see, I think, folks, that... Um, the key verse is in verse 13, where he says, he, after he says he's learned the secret of, of, of going hungry and, and, and of having abundance. And what is that secret? The secret is in verse 13, that he learned that he could do all things through Christ who strengthens him. No matter what circumstance you're in uh, financially, uh, no matter what circumstance you're in physically, no matter what circumstance you're in in your relationships, the things that go on in life that uh, we um, go through as Christians, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And I think that's something that's very, very important for Christians to remember. That's one of the key verses. I, I, I remember when I was in the military, um, <clears throat> 1972, <clears throat> I went into the chaplain's office and saw a little calendar. And on the front of the calendar, there was a picture of praying hands and uh, the scripture says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And it highlighted this verse. And I took that calendar and I just transferred it every, because of that scripture, from it to every wallet I ever had up until today, I still have it. I can barely read it. It's faded in some some areas. The, the dates and the calendar is definitely faded. But the scripture is still clear. And uh, it was an important scripture. It's one of those five-star scriptures I like to talk about that everybody should underline in their Bible, I can do all things through Christ or through him who strengthens me. Okay, and so I want to encourage you folks that you can do it. 
Okay, no matter what's happening, you're not walking through this uh, uh, this life and through these pits and through these tribulations alone. The Bible says that many are the afflictions of the righteous. Okay, so as Christians, we're not immune from tribulation and trials. We're not immune from affliction, so don't get mad at God. Okay, don't start blaming God for the things that happen because <clears throat> the Word has already told us <clears throat> many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord is faithful to deliver us from them all. So read the second part. Yes, you know, there will be afflictions. There will be things that happen. We live in, 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 in Satan's system until the Lord returns, until we see the devil thrown into the lake of fire forever. Okay, man has forfeited this worldly system over to the devil through the sins of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And although Christ died for us on the cross, okay, we as individuals have to take faith and appropriate what Jesus did on the cross into our own lives, okay? And that involves an act of faith, an act of trust, and an act of obedience on our part. And this is why Paul said, I can do. And do that's, a, that's an action term, okay? I can do. Doing is a verb. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So we have to be willing to take that step to appropriate and to do and to move in faith and to in, in, move in the faith that uh, God has uh, given us because the word says to each is given a measure of faith. We all have it. So don't feel like, well, you know, it sounds good, but I don't have faith. Yes, you do. The Bible says to each is given a measure of faith. You do have enough faith. And he said, even a flickering wick he'll not quench. So you might say, well, I'm just, I'm like a candle. Yeah, I used to be on fire, but right now I'm barely burning. There's just a little glowing ember that's there left on that candlestick. But the word of God says he'll not, he'll not quench a flickering wick and he'll work with that. So folks, don't be discouraged, but exercise your faith. And, and, and then <clears throat> we want to go back to the beginning <clears throat> of these scriptures because I want to talk about that for a moment. Okay, not verse 11, not that I speak from want, for I have learned, I have learned, okay? This was something the Apostle Paul had to learn, okay? Through the things he went through, he learned, it says, to be content in whatever circumstance that he was in, okay? Then he went on to talk about how he learned to, I know how he knows how to get along with humble means, meaning that not having a lot, and also how to live in prosperity in having a lot. There are some people, you can't give them prosperity because they don't know how to live with it. They would, you can't give them money because they blow it. It goes to their head. They lose their focus and get their focus off of God and would run right out into the world and, and, and blow it all, you know, no, and only come back to God when they're broke. And then there are others that are uh, uh, in, 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 pro, in uh, poverty that, that think it's God's will for them to stay in poverty. They somehow think they're holy if they don't have anything. And that's not true either, okay? So we have to learn to to trust God, to walk with Him, to understand that we can do all things through Him who strengthens us, no matter what circumstance we're in. I, I know, I can say this too. I can relate to the Apostle Paul in this scripture because I know what it's like. I've lived this life, okay? So I do know what it's like to have a, a lot. I'm talking about a lot, more more than most people, maybe certainly more than the average person. Okay, I know what it's like. I've I've lived that life. Okay, and I've also lived a life where I didn't have anything. I remember when my wife and I first got married, our first year, when I was assistant pastor uh, of a church before I became the head pastor of that church. There was this one point in time <clears throat> that we looked in our savings and we had just we had eleven dollars <laughs> and 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 that was going to be our gas to get back home in, in in the car I was driving and after that we had nothing and we just prayed Lord Jesus help us we put this in your hands and I had this great job where I'd been making tons of money but all of a sudden um, things dried up and no work was coming in I don't even remember the, the economy I think had crashed at that time. And the enemy was fighting me because I had just become the assistant pastor of the church and we had nothing. We were really down to zero to the point that I, I saw a car drive by that had a security guard sign on it. I'll never forget this. And, uh, and, and, and I asked the guy, look, do you need anybody to help you? And, um, and uh, he said, well, not really. It's just me and, and somebody else. But, you know, I might have something. 
you know, for tonight or tomorrow. And I said, well, you know, let me have it. How much will you pay? I think he was paying like like $7 an hour. And I'm, I was used to making 120 an hour, okay, at least. And uh, $7 an hour, I said, I'll take it. <laughs> Here's my number. Give me a call, you know, and, and I'll be there tonight, you know, if you need me. And I went home that day and we just put it in God's hands and prayed, Lord, this is your ministry. This is your life, Lord. Our life is, we've given it over totally to you. We're going to serve you, Lord, even if we were in the streets, if we have nothing, but we're not going to uh, walk away you know, because of circumstances. We made a, a decision as a family to serve God no matter what. And I'll tell you what happened. Uh, we got home and I think it was probably two or three hours and, uh, before I was supposed to go work with this guy for six or seven dollars an hour. And he was just telling me, he was just trying to, to help me out, really. He didn't really even need me. And um, all of a sudden, I got a phone call with a, with a big case, and and I think it was several thousand dollars or something. And, and then I got another call and another call. And, and, and just in that same day, I think uh, uh, two or three cases came in, and, and, and we never looked back. We always continued to tithe. I mean, and I'm not going to tell you what you have to do and what you don't have to do, but in our family, we do believe in tithing, and we do we we tithe to the ministry, and we continue to do that. We didn't stop, and uh, but 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 God blessed us because we continued to have faith, and we were ready whether our circumstances were good and we had a lot, or whether we had nothing, we were still willing to serve the Lord. And there are some people that. Only they, they, they love God and they serve God when things are going good. They're, they praise the Lord. But when things are going bad, they get angry and they walk away from God or they shake their fist at God or they don't want to have anything to do with God. They think God is the one doing all this stuff to them and they get mad at God. But uh, it's not God's fault. <clears throat> but many times he will allow things to happen so that it shines a light on our hearts so that we really know where we stand with him and what our relationship really is because I've heard it, and I'm sure you have too. People will say, well, you know, I know my heart. But the, the Bible says that you don't really know your heart. You think you know your heart. But the Word of God says the heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? Um, you really don't know your heart. And just and the Bible also says a leopard can't change its spots. But folks, and that's a fact, but God can change the spots of a leopard, and God can change your heart. And, they'll get, and, when, and even though you don't know your heart, you don't know it yourself, God can illuminate and show you what's in your heart by the trials and the tribulations and the afflictions that you go through many times or circumstances that you go through. And when you go through those, by the way you react to it reveals really where your heart really is and whether you're really of the faith or not or whether you're in doubt and unbelief or not, or whether you're walking with God or not. And um, so... These things are all useful in their own way to to strengthen us. And I always tell people that life on this earth is a testing ground. It It's a testing ground for where we're going to spend eternity, whether we're going to be in heaven <clears throat> with the Lord in, for eternity or whether we're going to be in hell. It's all decided in this life that we're living here on this earth. So it's important that we live life the right way, that we take the right steps, and that we walk with the Lord and so I'm not good to tonight, uh, or I, say, I should say, yeah, I'm not tonight going to take out a lot of scripture and run through, you know, uh, a lot of different passages. I just want to do an expository on this verse because <clears throat> right before I went on, I realized that I had started a little bit late. I prayed and said, Lord, what is it that you want? And I began to look through my Bible and open it. And I just had to clear witness that we needed to talk about contentment because i believe folks that hard times are coming and some of us that have a lot right now may not have as much in the future and then there may be others that have nothing that may have a lot and there may be others in their lives don't change significantly as far as their uh, possessions and materialistic wealth go one way or the other but we are our circumstances can change and not all not everything in our circumstances in life is contingent upon money and how much we make or materialistic wealth or anything like that. But it's contingent upon other things. It could be, like I said earlier, <clears throat> it could be a, a a breakup of relationships. It could be a change in a person's health. Um, it could be financial, like we've already discussed. It could be so many things. and And so it's so important for us to learn contentment 
and 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 we learn that by understanding we can do as the scripture said we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us but folks you can't do all anything through Christ who strengthens you if you don't have a relationship with him okay so it begins with a relationship with the lord you have to have a relationship not religion okay there are places people go into churches and every sunday they're going there and getting together. And for them, that's their Christianity. But folks, if you're going to church and you're going through a lot of religious motions and going through all types of uh, uh, symbolism, um, uh, what is the right word uh, to use? You know, you're pouring on of cups and doing this and lighting candles and going through all this stuff, which is mainly religious tradition and, and everything. Folks, that's all it is, is religion. Okay, it, it's, it's, and, and, and many people are pacified by religion. They think that if they just go and they go uh, show up, that, that, that gives them a ticket into heaven. But the Bible says in the very, uh, on the last day that a person lives, that many will say, Lord, Lord, did we not uh, heal the sick in your name? Did we not do miracles in your name? Didn't we do this and do that and do the other thing in your name? The Lord, you know, did I, didn't I go to church in your name? Didn't I sing in the choir? Didn't I preach? Didn't I do an online Bible study every Thursdays and every Sunday or, or this or that or the other thing? And he's going to say, depart from me, you worker of evil. I never knew you. See, it comes down to relationship. And so we can do through all things through Christ who strengthens us when we have that relationship with him first. So it has to begin right there. Okay, so I want to encourage you. Make sure that you're walking with them in these times that we're living in. The Bible says that we need to look and examine ourselves and see if we're of the faith or not. So sometimes we need to take a look inside and ask ourselves, are we really doing God's will? It's so easy, folks, right now with churches closed and and, uh, people uh, ministering online, that if you're used to attending a church regularly, maybe you're not in ministry, that you just say, oh, what the heck, you know, it's not my fault if the church is closed on Sunday, I'm going to go do other things. And so you do you do other things and you don't even uh, uh, listen online or anything and you begin to drift away uh, from your faith and from the Word of God until pretty soon it doesn't really matter. And then one day when churches start, you may or you may not go back. But folks, that's a dangerous way to live. We need to live a, a regular, consecrated, daily life worshiping and walking with God because I really think that you know some people think that the 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 closure of of churches is a catastrophe to me I'd like I like it that we could gather together and wor- worship together because the Bible says we shouldn't forsake the assembling or gathering together of the saints so I, I I fight for that but at the same time I also understand that not being able to rely upon the church because some people will look at rely upon the church as a social place, a place of social gathering. It's and they use the church as their um, uh, as a substitute, okay, for for a relationship with Christ. Everything is about the church, and and it doesn't have anything to do with their relationship with the Lord. So sometimes for some people, the closure of the church might be a good thing because it causes them to examine their heart and to find out: Do I really have a relationship with Jesus, or do I have religion? instead see you can't do all things through christ who strengthens you if there is no relationship with christ so make sure that you have that relationship okay so that's all i want to say this evening i'm going to close with that and so i just want to uh, pray with uh, you and i want to ask those that <clears throat> maybe to da- tonight you're looking at at life and you're you heard what i said and it applies to you and you're saying man i don't have the relationship that 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 i should have had should have. Some may say, I don't have a relationship with the Lord at all. I never had one. There may be some that say, I have walked with God and I believe and I love the Lord, but I'm not where I should be right now in my relationship with him. And so there is no shame, folks, in making a recommitment to the Lord. Even as a minister myself, I recommit my life to the Lord. Seems like, um, gosh, you know, it seems like every few days because I, I, not because I'm out sinning or because I'm backsliding, but because I want to be closer to him. I want to know him more because it allows me to be more effective in ministry and being able to provide God's word to you. All right, so let's um, let's pray and let's believe God um, for those of you that want to 
or make a recommitment or maybe re or commit your life to Christ for the first time. Okay, it's the prayer is the same. I want you to pray this prayer with me. But remember something, folks. Okay, you're not praying to me. I can't, I'm not even here to see you. See you. I know that there are some people online. God bless you, Sylvia. I see you. Okay. And um, <clears throat> I know there are people online uh, that are, that that are, are, are or, or that that are watching and that will watch this this broadcast. But folks, you're not doing it for me, okay? You you, you got to be praying, and when your prayer, when you pray this prayer, it has to be to the Lord. You don't have to be able to see, feel, touch, smell, taste, or any of those things in the five senses to know that He's there. He is there. The Bible so what tells us that. That for those of us that come to him, he'll in no ways cast us out. So any of you can come to the Lord. But when you pray these words, you have to mean them. Because words are only words. I always say this, words are only words unless you mean them. I mean, how many of us have had somebody tell us, I love you? Or how many of us have said to somebody, I love you? But neither we or they are in the picture anymore, okay? I mean, you know, words are only words unless you mean them. It's easy to say something. It's another thing to mean it from your heart. So when you pray this prayer of commitment and recommitment to the Lord, pray from your heart. Make sure that you pray to the Lord, okay? And so um, with every head bowed, every eye closed, don't be looking around. You can open your hands like this as a sign of just surrender and pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross for my sins, that you rose from the dead on the third day, that you're alive today, seated at the right hand of the Father. Lord, I know that I have sinned and that I've come short of your glory. Lord, I know that I've not done your perfect will and that I've lived somewhat of a selfish life. And Lord, I'm asking that you forgive me for every sin that I've committed, Lord, the ones I can think of and the ones that I, I, I can't. Lord, that you will forgive me of those sins Lord, and I'm willing to repent, which means I'm willing to turn away by your help and by your grace, by your power, and, and by the help of the Holy Spirit. And, and, and Lord, I'm asking now with that, that you come into my life afresh, that you be my Lord and my Savior. And Lord, I thank you for doing that because tonight I can say, because I meant these words. I, I've surrendered my life to you, and I really do surrender to you. I get off the throne of my own heart and let you sit there tonight. And Lord, I surrender my life to you, and I ask, Lord Jesus, or I, or I thank you, Lord Jesus, for letting me be a Christian and knowing that I have a destination of eternity in heaven with you. In Jesus' name I pray, and I thank you for it. Amen. Amen. So as I, as you pray that prayer, you know, I always like to say, I just want to welcome you to the kingdom of God because that's where your citizenship is. We might be citizens in this world right now, but folks, remember something, okay? The Word of God says we're in the world, we're in this world, but we're not of this world, okay? We're ambassadors of the King, of Jesus Christ and of His kingdom first, okay? That's, that's, that's it. That's it. And um, so... You have a home. You have a heavenly home. And while you're here on earth temporarily, do as well. The Bible says the grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of God abides forever. And it tells us that um, our life is like a vapor. You know, it's we're here today, but, you know, gone tomorrow. It likens us to like a flower in the field that at one time it, it grew and it was so beautiful and it held its place. And one day... It was gone, no longer there. That is what our life is, and that's the reality. One day, none of us are going to live forever. We won't look young and beautiful like me um, forever, but eventually we all get older, and when that happens, you know, um, uh, we need to be prepared to understand that uh, the, the time will come for us to move on. Either the Lord will return or, we'll, or and come to us, or we'll go to Him but no one lives on this earth forever and we're all only a heartbeat away from eternity, okay? So where you spend eternity is important. So anyway, I want to thank all of you for listening to our study in the Word uh, and I will be back uh, Sunday night at 8 p.m. And this, so this is Misha Softier, Apostle Misha Softier signing out. 
and uh, wishing you a good night. Okay, God bless you. Bye-bye.